Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Atomstead. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add swimming mechanics in the Blender game engine. So in the last tutorial I did, I showed you guys how to add realistic water, which was made by Martin Optus. So as you can see over here, looks very nice. And someone requested that I do swimming mechanics. So I thought that is fairly relevant and we may as well do that as well. So as you can see here, I'm walking on the normal ground. And then now if I walk into the water, as you can see as it gets deeper and then I'll duck down and now I can swim. As you can probably tell the movement is actually less so uh, I sort of have dampened movement and then now when I get out of the water I'll duck up and then I have my normal speeds returned. So without further ado let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is click file new, open up a new blend file then up the top here click blender game and then over here GLSL and an animation frame rate of 60 then also over here we're going to click debug properties so make sure that is selected then we don't need this cube here so I'm going to press X and delete then also what we don't need is this camera over here so I'm going to press X and delete that as well then what I'm going to do is down in the description will be a link for an FPS template so go ahead and download that then once you've downloaded it go back into Blender and then go to file and append then once you've found your file which should be called FPS template version 2.0 click on that then go to object and select camera feet and head and click link and append like that now what you have to make sure you do is with this camera here we have to make sure that it is called camera so it doesn't have .001 at the end of it or anything because that won't let the water work so if you haven't watched the previous tutorial in which I showed you how to add realistic water I highly suggest you go ahead and watch that I also show you where to get the file from from which we append the water in so go ahead and watch that tutorial if you haven't already so if you have the water file then go ahead to file and click append then once you've found the file so over here click on it go to object and we just want plane and render camera and click link and append there we go so what I'm going to do is first of all move out a bit then I'm going to select my lamp here and go to the lamp settings and change it to a hemi then what I'm going to do is add in my land so shift A add a plane and this is fairly small so move it up and then press S to scale and we'll make it really big okay so you need the recent versions of Blender 2.7 upwards to be able to uh, scale and then your mouse just teleports to the other side of the screen if you haven't noticed uh, then also what we might do is go into wireframe over here select our camera and change the clipping to 500 okay and then what we're going to do go back into texture mode and then select this and we'll move it over to this side also what I'm going to do here is make this a little smaller because it is fairly large so something like that okay and then what I'm going to do over here is this is first of all going to be my ground so in the object properties I'm going to call this ground and then over here this can be water okay just like that and then what I'm going to do is my ground over here I might scale it a little bit in this direction and then I want a slope on it so first I'm going to press numpad 1 so 1 on the numpad go to wireframe and then we can see over here this black line is our water and this is our slope so maybe something around here okay uh, somewhere like that then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode with my floor selected or my ground then I'm going to right click this one hold down shift and select this one over here or down here you can click line tool and just select that one line and then back to numpad 1 and then we'll press E and extrude down okay just like that go back to vertice mode and we might move that back a bit we might move it up slightly something like that so just a sort of fall off slope uh, before we enter the deep part of the water okay so something like that should be fine then I'm going to press tab to go out of edit mode go along to the physics over here and just select actor and that should all be fine 
Then what I'm going to do is over here, my water, I'm going to select the actor as well. And then I'll also click collision bounds. I don't actually want water underneath it. So over here, if I go into solid view, uh, you can see that the water is going through the slope and is on the other side, which results in really weird reflections on this side. So what I'm going to do is move that over slightly. Uh, hold down shift to move it in small increments and we want it just so it can go under a little bit but not huge amounts so if you don't like this view where like scrolling in slows down what you can do is press numpad 5 or 5 on the numpad and uh, you go into orthographic view select our player here and scroll out a bit and we want to move him onto the ground to start off with okay so over here then move around move him up above the ground slightly okay and that should be most of the setup done so then over here I'll go to game logic then what I'm gonna do is over here click textured and just move it out a bit so something like that cool so now on my feet so we want the player selected over here so select the player and then under the feet here what I'm gonna do is add a ray sensor but before we do anything else, what we need to do is to our player, we need to add a property. So here I'm going to add a property to my player. It's going to be a boolean and it's going to be called swim. Okay, and then I'm going to click this eye over here so we can see it when we're playing the game. As you notice at the start, we also clicked debug properties so it shows up when we're playing the game. Okay, and so minimize that push that over there Then also what we need is for our ray sensor to detect an object so we want it to detect ground so on ground I'm going to add a property called ground then with ground selected I'm going to press control alt shift C and select origin to geometry like that and then what I'm going to do is select my player again so oh, something like that number 5 to go into orthographic Okay, and then over here, our ray sensor, we want it to be in the negative Z axis, so downwards. And what it's going to be doing is checking for the property ground, which we added to our ground over here before. And the range is how far down it goes. So what I found out before is our play here from the center downwards is roughly two units on the ray sensor here. So I might want to do double that, so a full player height before he dips down. So this might be four instead of two. And then we'll do x-ray mode as well. So it can go through the water and check how far the ground is. Okay, and this needs to also be on a true pulse, so it's constantly checking. Then over here, we'll add a AND controller and a NAND controller. So this is basically saying and, and this is not and. So when this over here isn't happening, then this one triggers. So join them both up to the ray, like that, minimize that. And then on this side, we're going to add two properties. So the first one will assign swim to true. And we will join that one up to the not and. So when it's not hitting the ground, it will set swim to true and then we should probably push this down and then over here this one is going to be swim and it's going to assign swim to false so he won't be swimming when it is touching the ground okay so those two join together and minimize that and minimize the ray then what we need to do is on this side add a property and this one is going to be when swim is equal to true okay and we're just going to over here call it uh, swim and then capital T for true and that will be on a true pulse and join that up to our normal movement so one two three four and our keyboard as well down the bottom here which is sprint and actually we only want these to work when it's false so what I'm gonna do is rename that to swim and then capital F and change this to false Okay, so not true, we want it to be false. So when he's not swimming, he has normal movement. Minimize that, add another property, 
when swim is equal to true so when he is swimming and name this swim capital T again on a true pulse then on this side we'll add our motion for when he is in the water so one two three four for each direction and then we'll join those up so add an and controller I'm guessing four four of those and join each of them up with the property swim true okay like so oh. and then what we want to do is join in these keyboards over here as well so the first one goes to the first one second one to the second one third one and then the last one so when W is being pressed and swim is equal to true and then we'll put the reduced movement in here so right now if we go to the top uh, it's positive x axis for uh, moving forward so over here instead of 0.1 I'm going to do 0 0.05 so half of that and minimize that and do the opposite which is S which is backwards so negative 0.05 and minimize that and then a and d is on the oh on the y-axis or was yeah so this went that way a is positive y and d is negative y so this one i'm guessing is a and oh no x we want y so 0 0.3 on the y and we'll join that one up and then on the D we'll join that up and we'll do on the Y axis negative 0.03 okay so reduce movement instead of 0.1 and minimize that and minimize all these ones pressing numpad 0 to go into camera view and then pressing P okay and as you notice we need to run over to our water which is all the way over here as you can see the closer we get the more detailed it becomes and we'll go down our slope and then now we're in the water and there you can see in the top left hand corner swim has been set to true and our movement's been reduced and now what I want to do is add a bit of an animation to show that you're in the water so a ducking down animation as you saw before so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to zoom into my player here or maybe I can just press numpad 1 so 1 on the numpad and then over here go to wireframe and scroll in a bit over here then select our head of our player so head and then down here in the bottom corner make a new window just by hovering over and then dragging then timeline go to frame 0 I insert location and go to frame 30 and then move it down fairly low down so somewhere around here and then I insert location okay and then now we'll move that back to frame 0 and then here we'll add an action and we'll change it to flipper so over here we'll select head action starts at frame 0 ends at frame 30 and then what we'll do is hold down shift and select our movement so select that and I'll make this window bigger and then over here we want to join this up to when swim is equal to true so over here I'm going to add another and controller join this up to when swim is equal to true and then join this up to a flipper action okay and then minimize that minimize that make our window bigger here maybe minimize this as well and now we'll press numpad 0 go to texture view and press P and then move along here okay and we'll get to our water over here go down the slope and now you watch swim and there we go true and we've ducked down now the main reason we don't want this cube here going below the bottom of the collisions is mainly we want to keep the player's view within the collisions and then also the water over here isn't actually made to be looked at from underneath so as you can see if we press P nothing shows up at all so we just want to make sure that the player's camera is kept above the water at all times if possible uh, to ensure the best results. So there you go guys, that is how to add swimming mechanics to your games in the Blender Game Engine. Also what you might have is a arm rig which does swimming animations as you're moving forward through the water when swim is equal to true and you might also have some splashing animations and stuff like that. 
So again, completely up to you. Hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, or share. All of that stuff is greatly appreciated and helps me out as well. But either way, hope you found the tutorial helpful. If your one didn't work, there'll be a link in the description so you guys can download a working copy just in case. But otherwise, that is about it. So thanks for watching, have a great week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.